Welcome to the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show. My name is Agnes van Rijn, and I'm a life and business success mentor to female entrepreneurs and small business owners who want to be successful, but on their own terms, and of course, whatever success means to them. I'm also the founder and the host of the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show, and today it is my privilege to be interviewing Viola Edward. Viola is an entrepreneur holistic psychotherapist, relationship coach, breath worker, business consultant, color and image analyst, and an internationally acknowledged lecturer. She's also the author of Breathing the Rhythm of Success. Viola was born in Iraq. She moved to Lebanon at the age of five and moved to Venezuela at the age of 13, where she spent 30 years. Love caused her to move to Cyprus in 2002, where she now resides and works with her husband, Michael, and where she created Kayana Holistic Development. Welcome to the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show, Viola. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. I'm You're so welcome. So good to see honored. you again. We only, yes, met, awesome. we only met a few weeks ago. Or is it a month already, more or less? Um, and yeah, we immediately felt drawn to each other. And, yes. I loved, and I loved your story. So there was no way you would not be on my show. So thank you for being here. So, so yeah. tell, tell us more um, about your, your journey and, and you know, where, you, where you came from and, and, and where you are at today. Yes. So... Basically, a migrant. Uh, I have been like kind of foreigner almost all my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm this woman who speaks many languages and you will find accent in all of them. <laughs> but at, this, at this age and stage, I have accepted that. Um, so as you, as you mentioned before, I have a Middle Eastern background. From my father's side, actually, it's very old um, uh, how you say, is an uh, ancestor group who mm -hmm. are the Assyrian, or even they speak a different language, it's not Arabic, it's Assyrian, which is like, uh, it's also known by the old Aramaic, antique Aramaic, and that was the first language I spoke that I don't speak anymore. So, and then my mom is Lebanese, and after the death of my father, when I was three years old, uh, my mom moved to Lebanon. And we study there and we live there. And I have a big piece of my heart to this country mm -hmm. where I, I spent my childhood. And uh, always speaking in Arabic with my mom. And, uh, uh, and I, I, I like to think that I have a good, good part of the Middle Eastern inside of me. But I'm a Latin American woman. We went there when I was 13 until I was 43. I developed there. I you know i like feel the vibration of the earth yeah in that. So i'm not surprised i mean yeah. that's where you yeah. spend most of your life in fact yes uh -huh. yes and then well at the beginning a little bit difficult because you know when you uh, when you kind of um change at this age of 13 yeah. you you in one hand you stop being a child well i stopped being a child long years ago anyway by then and the other hand you know our movement was a little bit um dramatic it was just before the lebanese war and our life changed a lot mm. and then i had to work so my education was interrupted and the drama here is that i am a book girl so <laughs> no for, i don't see it at all <laughs> <laughs> so for somebody to to have interrupted their studies and if you didn't like school but for me school was all my life mm. books were the thing that make me save my life from sadness and from all these changes in my life. So for me, it was very, very dramatic not to be able to go to school. And actually, between bracket, one of my dreams still to be achieved is to create schooling system for people like me who for any reason had to interrupt their studies because in that time, I could not study at night because I was underage. So if you could not study during the day and you, if you could yeah. not be part of the system, then you have to do a homeschool. And homeschool was difficult because by then we had to work eight, eight hours, 10 hours a day, plus mm. the time in transport. So I entered into the working force at a very early age at that time. So I feel a lot of uh, empathy for children who work and for all of those who need to work, we really need to create the optimal. It's a beautiful dream, makes really sense, yeah. 
Yes, yes. But at the same time, you know, you grow up very quickly. You, I remember I needed to look older. So, of course, uh, I, I, I had the height I have now. So people will think I'm going to be very tall, but I didn't grow up any, <laughs> anymore. But I managed to look older mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, you know, and then started my career slowly, slowly from being in a shop selling shoes, being in hairdresser, in hairdressing, and start being like in that time in the 70s, company will have telephonists, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then learn how to type and be a, uh, how you say it in English, in Spanish is mechan me yeah. mechanograph. Yeah. A, a, type, a, type, a typist, a dactylo, yeah. yeah, dactylo, yeah dactylo, dactylo, dactylo French. French. Uh, a I think it's a typist in English, yeah. yeah. Typist, yes, the, yes, the, yes. That, I, I don't that too. <laughs> Yes, yes. One day, I mean, it was, it was, you know, there is this fire inside. There is this wish to, to make it happen, to, to be part of something, to, to survive. Uh, also, you help the family. Of course, I have a younger mm -hmm. sister. And she managed, we managed that she continue in her schooling. And she would work on the weekend, but she did her schooling properly. And then, you know, by the age of 15, just before 16, I learned about a system that you can go and study at night. So run there. I didn't have the age, but I begged because I become very good begging for a good cause. And then they accepted me. And you know what? They not only accepted me, I was so good begging for that to study that they get so impressed. And they hired me oh to work God. in the same school in the morning. And then I will not pay for my, they will pay me. And then I will not pay for my study That's at night. That was wonderful. That was wonderful because by then I was <clears throat> in hairdressing that I really didn't like. I'm not good with my hands. I used to suffer a lot in that job because it's not a job. It's like, you know, hairdressing is like an art and you cannot be doing artwork if you're not connected with that art. Yeah. So I was yeah. really, really suffering there. So it was wonderful. So I started working in that school and studying at night and having to work and, you know. And then, um, again, languages and personality uh, saved me because then I find a job in an in a Arabic embassy, the Syrian embassy then. Mm -hmm. So I had much relaxed work. So it was like I was the secretary of the ambassador. And by then, I still not 17, you know. Wow. So it seems like... It seems like long, uh, long. I still have a little bit of trauma from that time because I used to have to read all the newspaper and cut and make little comment mm. of what is related to us. Still, mm. until today, I can't read newspaper that much, yeah? Because I read so much yeah. at early yeah. age. And then, you know, slowly, slowly my life developed because in the embassy then I met a lot of people, <clears throat> very hardworking, and then I was hired again for a wonderful work as a first public relation and then coordination of sales. It was a wonderful idea then that how to install uh, optician work in pharmacies. Yeah. So we would go and train the pharmacists about how to measure the basic things. And we will put the, uh, install the, merchandise there mm. and we will have transport daily to pick up and that will drop the prices down because we didn't have to pay uh, employees or rent so uh, it was a boom mm. and then I was in that company since the beginning and guess what by the age of 20 before 21 I was like national coordinator wow. of national co <laughs> this is this is once more uh, such a living proof or of when there is a will there is a way i mean you were determined to to grow and and to make things happen yeah love that i can tell you a story about that time because i didn't have a family background to have bank account and credit card i had to have it by myself mm -hmm. so you could not in that time in the 70s you cannot have a credit card if you were under 21 mm -hmm. so here i am under 21 I'm national coordinator of a company and I don't have a credit card. <laughs> so I would go to that city to install a new system of uh -huh. sales or, or, or delivery 
and the manager of that city will have to come with me to the car hires to put his name because I could not hire a car because I was underage. You know? Gosh. <laughs> so we have all these, oh, we have all these wonderful stories yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh God, make me over the age and they will tell me you will regret that, you know, this is a good time and I think I never regret to age. But it was a very difficult time to be so young. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, that was excellent. That was really, really amazing time traveling into the city and and uh, met all by then in Venezuela. And uh, well, this company had a bad move. Um, I remember even with my short age, I would see that it's bad move and say, please, 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 let's don't do this now. And then uh, they tried to do the same system with contact lens as we have that much success. And the market was not for that. And then we crashed as a company and back to zero. The company closed. And here I am, 21 now, no degree, women, foreigner, and no job after having that amazing, well-paid job. Mm -hmm. So start again. I was looking for a job as manager. You know, It took me like six months to understand that I will not get it. And in a way, starting again. And a um, little bit tough time. Yeah, can I imagine? Uh, uh, you know, let go of the house, let go of the apartment, uh, um, many things. And then uh, it was lovely, lovely time also because we met with a group of people who was just coming to the country or just divorced or just left their job like me. And we hired a beautiful house in a good area. But we didn't have any furniture, it doesn't matter, but we were well installed. And one of us was a painter. So we would do a lot of painting exhibition there and I find a job. And it was a beautiful time for community life that uh, also helped me understand much later when I was really living in community. And slowly, slowly, I, I make my way again and I find a place in insurance company and again, my PR, my personality, what I knew already about people and about managing people helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. So those next 10 years, I developed in insurance sector, uh, first from broker and then insurance company. And until I become a manager there, all this way, along this way, I'm reading and studying about psychology and dreaming about being a psychotherapist but I have to say in some moment I thought it's not going to happen because you are you know in the ladder up into your profession and sometimes you think I made it now yeah yeah and guess and guess what you have credit card from the company now <laughs> many... <laughs> that's a change <laughs> and many think paid and all these services you have and how you're going to let all this go and you're 34 or over 30 and you have family and you have, you know, I have a mother and a sister. And so it was very, very strong decision mm -hmm. to let all that go and then retrain and go after my dream of psychology. So it's interesting that uh, because it, it, it's showing to uh, to people who are viewing or listening that um, when you have a dream in the background like that, even at a later stage in life, you can make it happen um, as long as, as you stay focused on, on that dream. And as you describe it, that you dare taking risks, it becomes a choice and uh, a calling a calling of the heart almost. Huh? Yes, yes, I do take risks. Yeah, yeah. To take it in many areas of my life. Mm. I, I was very scared. But one year before that, I get in connection with meditation. And for me, it was a very, very interesting connection. Because as a child, I was a very spiritual child. And I thought I'm going to be a nun because I'm coming from a very... Uh, uh, Catholic family mm -hmm. with uh, religious in the family, etc. And and then in some moment around eleven, I think I get very upset with whatever um, the superior being is, and I think 
for many years I felt so lonely because I thought I have to do it for myself mm-hmm. only. Then meditation did the big job for me because it reconnected me with the strength inside of me and then I connect with the strength outside of mm-hmm. me. And then now it was another way of the creator, you know, it's from inside out, from outside in. And that, I have to say, it, it, it gives me, like, um, first, it gives me a lot of reconciliation from, with my family, where I'm coming from. And, uh, and I create this inner world. Um, and then, by then, I, I used to meditate a lot. And then I met breath work. And it's very important, breath work. In that time, we met it as rebirthing. And rebirthing is a methodology that is in the world of the breath work. Mm-hmm. And this is another thing from inside out, is the ability of a process that we do every day, always, which is our breathing system, mm-hmm. how we get aware of it and how we learn to change it, to expand it, to, if you want to get control over it, because we breathe so little just to survive, and suddenly yeah. you understand you have all this power, and you learn how to breathe. And that, I mean, I could talk hours about <laughs> of breath work, mm-hmm. and this is the thing that I work with nowadays, and I'm international trainer. So I think that would give me the strength to know that is me, meditation, my thinking changing the negative thinking, connecting, sitting, breathing, and then clearing and cleaning and reordering our inner system by our breath, this is very powerful. Mm, I absolutely believe that. I I hope we will have time with our friend in in London to have a group and do a session. Oh, that that would would be fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Yes, because as as much as I talk, you know, it's going to stay short with the Mm -hmm. experience. Now, of course, you have to experience it. And then uh, when the time comes, when I was 34, to to let that go, and with the little money, again, I have very little, and go and retrain and go to United States, and this is another chapter, and it's like, ah, getting life back, you know? Mm -hmm. So So feeling reconnected with with you, in fact, completely. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, to fast forward a little bit because the um, interview is uh, half an hour uh, only. By, they were one hour in the past, but by experience, I know that people find it too long. So uh, they don't necessarily have the patience to go uh, for one hour. Yes. So if you bring it now to where you are today, because obviously you keep learning uh, and uh, it's impressive when I read your biography all, all the things you do uh, yeah. and your book and, and, and etc yeah. so tell us more about all of that and, and where you are are now what you're doing now yes yes well of course now at 57 and starting at 13 sometime when I read about my biography I said oops this is like a little bit too much and then I remember oh. it's starting from 13 I'm 57 <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> yes look uh, the, the breath work um, connection that was huge because I connect with the founder of it and then I come back to Venezuela with that service that product in the perfect time at the good moment and it just took me less than a year that I was in newspaper and tv and radio and and that um, uh, breath work uh, then creating the rebirthing center of Venezuela and then taking this knowledge of many years in the com- in the enterprise in the organization mm-hmm. plus my experience now as a psychotherapist and breath worker, then I become a, a very interesting consultant of the 90s because it, it was when we started to talk about emotion mm. in, the, in the organization, in the yeah. corporation. So uh, to make the story very short, it was nine years of success, of traveling, of, of becoming international lecturer and being all over the places. And then we end with a wonderful uh, congress in Venezuela, like my gift. And then in 99, met Michael in Spain in one of these breathwork uh, foundations. Mm-hmm. And we start our relationship. And also, I have to say, I have to say that my upbringing and all this changing of country and the loss of my father had made me a woman who could not trust men and could not 
really stay in a relationship. I was having a lot of success mm -hmm. in my, in my uh, work life, but certainly not in my love life. I could <laughs> not stay in a relationship. But then at the age of 30, I went as a patient into psychotherapy. I work a lot in myself. I practice a lot. I believe on it. And I can see that at the age of 40, when I met Michael, I was more ready. I'm ready. So after mm -hmm. many years, yes. Beautiful, after beautiful. Yes, yes. So and, 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 then, and that translates in a move again. Then that, that make it a move again. And where, you know, Michael was born in Cyprus and he has already these ideas to come back. He has a house here. He had started a uh, uh, business here. And we said, let's give it a try and see how does it go. Mm -hmm. And this time I thought I travel enough. And, you know, I thought I can make it, you know, that follow my man you know mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well it was a little bit difficult than i thought uh, but but uh, again to middle east because cyprus is here it's yeah. in this part of the world and um it took me five years to establish my business again because it was again this business related to trust and to open your heart and I'm new in a place that I didn't know anybody but I knew I already had the how can you call it um, I already had the seed of success and the experience of it so I was not that scared this yeah. time yeah. It, just took, it just took time and and I was very fascinated by my relationship and and working a lot on myself and how to stay because that was difficult even happiness is, is um, not that easy. And yeah. to understand happiness and to, and to be able to go over the trans transcultural issues in a relationship like ours, any relationship. But Yeah, that's uh, adding a layer, of course, of, of potential challenges, definitely. Yes, yes. And then, you know, slowly, slowly meeting people here, making family, making friends. Some people... Uh, joke about me and they say I should be member of parliament because I know a lot of people in this country <laughs> and and you know and slowly slowly it was difficult because psychotherapy was like so new and nowadays is 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 it's spread and um and I have beautiful colleagues and again I can work like in team I have like complementary medicine doctor alternative doctor conservative doctor other psychotherapists, yeah. psychiatrists, that depend on what, what the client needs. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, what we need is to tailor what the person needs. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes they don't need me. Maybe they did the connection through me. And I have to be, the, I could be the one who can facilitate the process yeah. so they, they come to you. And again, here, after uh, 13 years here, and after focusing a lot in my marriage, and we have an amazing, beautiful relationship, this year I felt it's my time again to go back international. Mm -hmm. and, to, and, to, and there where we met, and I was doing some more training in, in London. Because later I did another master degree here in Cyprus about positive psychotherapy. And uh, in 2011, I get... Uh, the franchise for uh, color analysis mm -hmm. for Cyprus on the House of Color in England. And that brought to my job, to my work, another dimension, uh, refreshment, refreshment yeah. because working all the time from inside out, this time is from outside in. And it's so beautiful because it's also organic, uh, sustainable, is when we know which color we can use and what's our style. Yeah. And what suits us best, so we, we have the tendency to then to clutter less, to buy less, and to have much more by having less. And to also be in harmony of who we are. Yeah, it's because that I, alignment thing. Yes, yes, because I started so young, and I needed to look older. And then later I get a lot of loyalty to those colors that I used to mm. wear. And because I'm very naturist and organic, and so I used to use this earthy color that, but in reality, they are beautiful in some other person, <laughs> not on me. So, so we come to the conclusion that there is no ugly colors. 
but there's color that suits you and enhance you and make the best of you. So nowadays I'm working a lot still in my uh, psychotherapy and I specialize in couple and do a lot of relationship coaching and then the style and the color. And I'm going to go back to do groups and internationals. And I'm very, very interested to make you come to Cyprus and do activity here. So come here for some days and do some intensive work with me and with me and with Michael because I specialize in the breath work, mental and emotional work. And mm-hmm. Michael specialized in the body work ah. and he does Watsu and Maybe in some other moment you would like to have a talk with him, but he does breath work and he does the Watsu, which is a whole beautiful subject to talk about. And we have our uh, um, center here, Kayana, and uh, we would love to welcome you and have some days here, and apart from doing tourism in Cyprus, to be able to dive inside and outside and do some, some work, you, your family, your couple. And what else can I tell you? I'm coming back to going back to London to be with all of you and with Mirella in the Global Women's Summit. Yeah, at the end oh, of so the much looking, oh, So much looking forward to go 30 and 31 to be yeah. with all of you doing more work. And, and you know, because what it makes a coach or a therapist, the good one, is the one who keeps working in herself. In oh, herself. absolutely. Yeah. So we keep always the two lines of learning and teaching and sharing and learning more. And yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So Viola, uh, so I, I definitely love uh, everything you're doing. I find it a very uh, beautiful, uh, I would say, it's a holistic approach, in fact. Uh, it's everything inside and outside uh, for, for the person. Can you tell us uh, where people can find you? Yes. Um, in, oh, and your book, of course. <laughs> Yes, uh, this book, uh, you can download it in my website, violaedward.com. This book was written in 1997. Uh, It's so nice and easy and practical, so you can have it for free from the website. And also, it's it's, uh, nowadays translated to Turkish, and it was written in Spanish years ago. Yeah, well, with you, it had to. Yes, and we, we're hoping to have the Greek translation and hopefully one day the Arabic translation. Mm-hmm. And Michael and me, we are working in another book now about relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't of say of course, book, like beautifully and, and he's a poet. And, uh, and uh, not only our knowledge from being therapeut, but also the knowledge of how did we um, make it walking the talk oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and exactly. and that is, is, is wonderful sharing so hopefully soon we can meanwhile we are writing about it in the global magazine mm-hmm. that Mirella uh, launched so beautifully so you can have it online and also in, in the paper magazine yeah. so we have frequently those articles yes and so your website where pe- where, where can people find so, you so uh, violaedward.com is my website. Uh, I have a Facebook, uh, Viola Edward Coaching, or my Viola Edward de Glenville. And then uh, we have uh, the Twitter at Viola EDG. But I think you have all that. And you can find me. I'm in Cyprus. You know, my uh, just Google me and you can find Viola, me. At- Viola Cyprus. <laughs> and Ruth. <laughs> Okay, my email is actually very, very easy. It's violacoach at gmail.com. Yeah, okay, perfect. So you will remember. Yes. But I suppose that in any event, uh, people can find all, all those links, etc., on your uh, website as well. So. Yes, yes, yes. No LinkedIn is yeah. Viola Edward also. Yeah. I, 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 keep, I keep, I have to say, the Edward. Edward was the name of my father. Mm-hmm. And in, in the Arabic country, some of us, some countries, we keep the name of the father but viola is my father also was a musician and and he he was very connected with music so my name is is very much in the love that he has for music yeah, and beautiful and uh yeah so so i'm married and we latin american we we add the husband name yeah. so i'm viola edward de glanville but but i've been viola edward for so long so this is where you're yeah, gonna find and it me. makes it makes it easier for everyone everyone <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
you so much for your time. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, it definitely shows uh, our viewers and listeners that uh, everything is possible when you set your intention to make it work. Um, and so for those of you who are interested in indeed making things happen in your life, I'm offering a free complimentary, well, free is complimentary, sorry, complimentary uh, discovery consultation uh, that you can book on my website. Uh, and that is www.agnesvanrijn.com and that is A-N-Y-E-S-V-A-N-R-H-I-J com. Thank you again, Viola. And uh, well, lovely yes. that I'm going to Thank see you again at the end of the month. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you.